Hi, welcome back to another episode of Sankofa Pan African series. In this episode, we'll be looking at another Nubian kingdom, Meroe, also sometimes pronounced Mero. Napata, the capital city of Kush, was sacked around 590 BC by the Egyptians under the leadership of um, Pharaoh Samtik II. After this, Mary became the capital of the kingdom of Kush and then gradually developed into a large, prosperous empire. The establishment of the 25th dynasty at Meroe marked the beginning of another civilization which flourished. Research suggests that Nubians only developed alphabetic writing systems around 200 BC during the Meroitic uh, period. Unfortunately, not much has been done to study the Meroitic language thanks to people like um, Dr. Cheik Antadio, you know, um, who carried out some studies trying to decipher Meroitic uh, language. There is, however, a lot of documentation on Meroitic Nubia in the art and literature of Greece and Rome, whose empires touched on the borders of Nubia after 330 BC. The final period of the kingdom of, uh, of Kush is also sometimes known as the Meroitic period. The Meroitic period lasted from about 300 BC until the 4th century CE. Meroe was ideally located as a seaport on the Nile, thereby serving as trade routes to the Red Sea and also the African interior. The Nile also made irrigation possible, and this helped to turn Meru into an agriculturally fertile area. In addition, Meroe developed lucrative iron and gold mines. It also had pyramids and more than a dozen Kushite uh, kings, queens and other nobles are buried in uh, Meroitic uh, pyramids. Some cities in Meroe even had more pyramids than all of the ones found in Egypt put together. Like Egyptian pyramids, the pyramids at, at Meroe marked the burial spots of um, the noble royalty and rich people. However, unlike Egyptian pyramids, Meroitic uh, pyramids were smaller and did not actually contain the burial chamber as themselves. The tombs in the Meroitic pyramids were beneath the, the pyramids instead of inside it, uh, like the Egyptian ones. The Egyptian uh, pyramids actually, you know, had the remains of the dead lying on the surface, inside, lying inside on them. Um, on surfaces inside the pyramids, whereas the Meroitic uh, 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 pyramids had the remains buried under the pyramid. So their pyramids were more like large tombstones marking burial places of um, important people. Now, in researching about uh, Meroe, for me, one of the most interesting aspects of the culture was the role which uh, women played. Queens wielded immense political power in, in the land alongside the kings. The title of the queen was Kentic, which has over time been Latinized into the name Candice. Um, which most likely meant queen mother or queen regent. And there were at least seven Kentics 
recorded between 284 BC and 115 CE or AD. In archaeological artworks, Kentik Amanishaketo is depicted as an extremely large towering figure conquering her enemies who are then rendered as smaller and helpless in her grasp. Also, the Kentic Amanitore is another one, another very powerful Kentic, shown in the same way on the Lion Temple at Naga. These images illustrate the power and prestige that women rulers held in the Meroitic um, culture. Some historical accounts relate how one Kentic actually thwarted Alexander the Macedonian, also known as Alexander the Great, by arranging her army so strategically in a way which forced him to retreat. Even Augustus Caesar was compelled to make a peaceful um, treaty which favored Meroitic interests over those of Rome under the leadership of a powerful uh, Meroitic um, Kentic. The Meroitic Empire was wealthy and powerful, incorporating the Middle Nile region of the Sudan. Mero was located at the crossroads of major trade routes and it flourished from 800 BC to 330 AD. Meroe grew to become so prosperous and was written about by Herodotus around 430 BC. It was famous for its wealth in ancient times. This made it a target of attacks by various armies, um, especially by the Persian king Cambyses, who mounted an exhibition to capture it, but his attempt failed. At the height of its glory, Meroe was a great center of iron smelting, agriculture, and trade. Egyptians and later Romans needed African goods like hardwoods, ivory, animals, including elephants, and Meroe became a major source of supply. Meroe also had a robust iron industry, which made tools and weapons, and these made the city-state very wealthy. It was also well situated, because its situation along the banks of the Nile was really advantageous. Meroe had well laid out broad avenues and the wealthy of the city lived in great houses. There was apparently also a well-developed system of gathering rainwater because the remains of great systems have been found. It is believed to have survived a Roman invasion but later was conquered by Axomites around the year 330 AD which brought about its decline. Often considered the last of the great Nubian kingdoms, Meroe thrived for several centuries. It got progressively weaker as Egypt became absorbed into the Roman Empire, which by that time dominated trade to the north. So by 350 AD, Meroe was abandoned. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so. Like us and feel free to share with your friends. See you next time.